Yes, I was aware of the work he was doing, and I felt proud of him that he was able to do that. Aquino had been living in the United States for the past three years, but he decided to go home. Even though President Marcos warned him not to come, even though friends warned him, he faced death. He left his wife and five children in Newton, Massachusetts. And his wife, Corazon, and 12-year-old daughter, Christina, are with us now from our bureau in Boston. Mrs. Aquino, your husband's friends warned him that he faced grave danger if he went home. Did he discuss that with you, and what did the two of you say about it? Well, uh, I think uh, my husband being in political life, I think the two of us were always aware, you know, of the dangers involved. And uh, having gone through a detention of seven years and a half, and uh, my husband had, you know, gone on a hunger strike in 1975. And at that time he told me that he had surrendered himself to the Lord. And he told me after 1975, all the years will be bonus years, and we should be grateful for them. So when he left on August 13th and said goodbye to you, the two of you understood that, that he might uh, face uh, uh, grave danger, imprisonment, and even death? Well, we thought imprisonment would be it. I myself uh, believe, you know, that would be uh, the worst thing we could expect. Uh, we were hoping for a house arrest, but uh, it seemed to us that maybe he would be put back in the detention center. Uh, never, never did I think, you know, that this would happen. Now, President Marcos warned him not to come, said he would not be admitted to the country, and in fact said the reason was an assassination plot against your husband had been uncovered. What did your husband say about that? Well, uh, as early as July 19, after my husband had filed an application for a travel document to return home, uh, he was told by the authority, the Philippine Consulate General that um, he should not return home because the government had uncovered assassination plots against him. Because of this, uh, my husband sent a telegram to President Marcos asking him that uh, he, you know, reverse the order uh, of the Consul General and allow him to return home. My husband said that uh, all he wanted to do was return home to effect a national reconciliation and that he had a clear conscience and he was not afraid of any possible assassinations, uh, assassination plots. Did he ever get a reply from President Marcos? Uh, it was not President Marcos, but the defense minister, Juan Ponce Enrile, who sent my husband a telegram. And uh, we received this on uh, August 2nd, and uh, the telegram said for my husband to delay his arrival in Manila by 30 days at least so that uh, they could neutralize the, uh, the alleged assassins. All right. With, with all of this as the background, uh, Mrs. Aquino, why did your husband go home? Well, uh, my husband felt that... Uh, while he was strong and healthy, and while he believed Marcos was, strong, was you know, still in good health, that uh, he could ask President Marcos to please talk to him, and he wanted to uh, plead with Mr. Marcos to restore the democratic processes in our country. My husband believed that only Marcos, with his authority and power, could do so. So it was so imperative that he go home while it was still possible for the two of them to talk. Well, why did he think he would have any influence over President Marcos? Uh, the, Mr. Marcos hated your husband, and your husband certainly disliked the president. Well, uh, my husband felt that um, here he was living, you know, in Boston uh, for the past three years, uh, living in a free country, and yet willing to give all this up and risk another jail term uh, he thought that would prove his sincerity to the president and uh, he felt if the two of them could communicate directly with each other and uh, since they both love uh, the Philippines then maybe the two of them could work out something uh, to restore democracy to our country. Mrs. Aquino, who do you think murdered your husband? I would not like to say anything uh, definite now. Uh, 
I would like to return home and talk to the people there. I have just uh, seen uh, the television shots. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, I thought that the security uh, given my husband was really inadequate. Uh, there were only three uh, soldiers whom I saw on television as coming up the plane to take my husband. When we were still in the Philippines and when my husband was in the detention center, whenever he would go to you know, either the Supreme Court or the military tribunal, there would be at least 20 to 30 security men you know, guarding, guarding him and uh, really uh, looking out for his security. So uh, this really was uh, quite a strange thing uh, to see happen, you know, only three people going up there to, uh, to take him. Well, now, the government says your husband was uh, murdered by uh, someone who had slipped in and put on the uniform of, a, of an airport worker and had come very close uh, with, a, with a single pistol. Uh, you, saw, you saw the television pictures uh, of that man lying there. Does that seem probable? Uh, let me say this. Uh, my relatives told me that it was very difficult to get to the airport. Uh, you had to get tickets, and uh, even where they were, you know, they were still so very far away from where the airplane was. It just doesn't seem possible. Uh, I don't know how that assassin could have possibly gotten to where he was. Uh, you know if he were just alone. Mrs. Aquino, I want to talk to you a little bit more and also to your daughter, Christina. And we'll do that if you'll just please stand by when we return in just a moment. All right. Mrs. Aquino, let's put politics aside for a moment. Tell us about y your husband. You, you were married, what, 28 years ago? What kind of a man was he? Well, uh, for me, he was the best possible uh, he was the best possible man for me. I have never met any other man that I have, would have wanted uh, to have as a husband and to have lived with all of these 28 years. A lot of people said he was flamboyant, was he? Well, maybe he was, uh, but to me, uh, he was my ideal man. And uh, he made me happy. And not only that, if I am a better person today, I think I owe that to my husband. You're he, your daughter Christina is there with you, is she not? Yes, she is. Christina, what kind of a dad was uh, Benigno Aquino? My dad was caring, and he may not have been there with us for that much, but the time we spent together really means a lot to me and to, uh, to my family. Well, you know, a lot of busy people aren't uh, there all the time. Uh, were you aware of the type of work he was doing? What did you think of that work? Yes, I was aware of the work he was doing, and I felt proud of him that he was able to do that. Do you know the difference between terms such as freedom, uh, despotism, uh, tyranny, uh, uh, and, and uh, freedom? I know freedom and tyranny. I, do, I don't know that despotism or whatever but what did your father say to you about freedom and tyranny and the difference freedom was something that we should cherish and he never really talked about tyranny all that much to me but freedom we were able to have it here you know he was in jail for a long time in the Philippines yes and I was only two years old when he was put in jail and then he came to the United States. He had open heart surgery, and, and that made him well. And he, and he went to, uh, to Massachusetts, and he taught. What about those years, the last three years? They were very happy times for all of us. And it was a time that I really got to know my father. And it was also a time that we were happy. Did the two of you talk just before he left uh, a few days ago to go back to Manila? Well, um, he called us from Taipei. And he, he just told me that to hurry home because um, the prison where he was was lonely and sad. Christina, what are you going to do with your life? Do you know yet? Um, so, no, I don't. And I 
somehow want to be a lawyer, but I'm not really sure of that right now. Do you think you would want to go back to the Philippines, live in the United States, or some other country? I loved it here in the United States, but I know now that the Philippines is my country. It's the country where we should live. Mrs. Aquino, uh, you and your family are going back to the Philippines tomorrow. I think you take a plane uh, early in the, in the morning. Yes, that's right. You've talked to your uh, friends and relatives there. What do they tell you about the atmosphere? What are you going to find? Do you know? Well, uh, this morning I got a call from my sister. And uh, you see, my husband is, was lying in state in our home. And she told me that if it were all right with me, they would like to transfer him to a bigger place, maybe one of the uh, churches in in our neighborhood. You see, there have been so many people coming to see my husband. Uh, they counted something like 1,500 people per hour, and uh, the people had said that they had waited in line for so something close to four hours. What do you think of that? Well, I, I am just very grateful for all these people, and uh, I think, uh, I hope this means that my husband did not die in vain. Mrs. Aquino, do you fear that you may be in danger if you return to the Philippines? I don't think so, and uh, I do not worry about those things. I feel that uh, my place uh, should be in the Philippines now, and I am eager uh, to be home to see my husband and to arrange for the funeral. Thank you very much. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Aquino, Christina, for being with us tonight from Boston. Thank you. When we return, we'll look at reaction in the Philippines the day after Aquino's assassination. We'll also have a report on what the death of Aquino will mean to U.S.-Philippine relations. Will the killing prompt President Reagan to cancel his planned trip to the Philippines? As well as a report on how Aquino spent his three years of exile in the United States. <laughs>